Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people think they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, because they're special. And in today's episode, Opie tells a tale about the time she worked for this super entitled boss who expected so much and yet never paid OP a single dime. Guys, it's such a wild story, so buckle up, enjoy the tales, and as always, you can send your stories to this email right here. Let's dive in, guys. Okay, so I'm a 31-year-old female, and I've been with my boyfriend, who's 37, for 8 months. He has 3 kids, and he's a single dad. We're on pretty good terms regarding almost everything. When it comes to money and spending, we take turns to invite each other out weekly, as we don't live together, obviously. Several times, he had me pay for his kids' purchases. Now, I didn't make a big deal out of it for the sole reason that those purchases were relatively small. It was around $30 to $60. But the other day, he calls me when I was at work, and he sounded like he was in a hurry. He said he just found a gaming device that he's been looking for for so long, and he wanted to buy it for his oldest son. I asked, what's this have to do with me? And he tells me he was short on money, so he needed $300. Now, I do want to note that I have a pretty good paying job. He asked me to lend him the $300, and I hesitated but agreed. But here's the kicker. He asked for my bank account info, so he could pull the money, but I refused and told him to wait until I got there. He insisted that he'd handle it, and all I had to do was send him my bank account information after I end the call with him. His insistence made me uncomfortable, so I said no, and I told him to either wait or I won't pay. He then got mad at me saying that he doesn't get why I was acting like this. He then got really loud, and I had to hang up. I found him sitting outside my house when I got home. He was waiting for me and he was extremely upset. He asked why I didn't just send him the account info so he could pull the money we agreed on. I told him I didn't feel comfortable letting anyone have my personal information, especially when it comes to finances. He then gets offended and said, I'm not just anyone, I'm your effing boyfriend. He then went on a long rant about how he ended up not paying for the gaming device after looking for it for so long, and how his kid is now mad at him, and it's my fault. So we had a fight and then he left and he told me that I'd better have an apology for him and his son next time I call his phone. I haven't called yet and I felt like I acted stupidly and irrationally. I think I should have just given him the information he asked for. I don't know if I made the right decision. Yeah, no, OP definitely made the right decision by not giving that guy her bank account information. Like 8 months in and he's already demanding that you give him access to your finances? Like how do we know he wasn't going to take out more than $300? And the fact that he gets mad at OP and waits outside for her to come home to confront her about it? That's a pretty big red flag guys, and on top of that, he expects an apology to him and his son because OP told him no, which is a double red flag. A lot of people are telling OP to just dump this guy. Okay, so listen to this guys, OP does come back with an update which makes things way, way worse. OP says, since many of you wanted to know what happened, I went to his place and I talked to him and his oldest son. And it turns out, the gaming device thing was a lie. He wanted the money for something else, to help pay for one of his buddy's car repairs that he owed him for. I was shocked when he confessed, and he said he had to lie about it, and make it about his kids to get me to lend him the money. You can only imagine my reaction after this, I just blew up at him and left without giving him a chance to respond. He tried calling my phone, and he's still trying, but I decided that I want some space to think about what happened, and to really reevaluate our relationship. Yeah guys, in my opinion, he should have just asked if OP would be willing to lend him the 300 bucks, instead of pretending it was for his son. Like, that makes things way worse because now he's lying to OP. So guys, let me know what you guys think. The verdict still stands that OP needs to ditch this dude. But hey, who's handing out second chances here? Let me know in the comments below. So there I was at my local strip mall carryout pizza hut, waiting up front with one other customer for my order. That's when a disheveled older man walks in, wearing a t-shirt and pajama pants, and carrying a pizza hut pizza box. He walks up to the counter and the exchange with the employee goes something like this. The man says, hey, I called earlier. You said I could have this pizza for free. The employee tells him, yes sir, we delivered it to your house by accident. You can keep that pizza. It's free. It was at this point the man opens up the box and shows the pizza toppings to the employee and says, this pizza has pepperoni on it. I don't eat pepperoni. The employee was confused and said, uh, I'm sorry? The guy then says, make me another one. The employee at this point is still confused and the man says, since the pizza's free but I can't eat it, just make me another one. 
Now, I was listening to the entire exchange, and I perked up here and shared the what the F look with the employee and the other waiting customer. I then laughed uproariously at the man's brazen and shameless request. He then turns around to look at me, and then he lowered his eyes sheepishly, and that's when the employee says, if you'd like to pay for one, then sure. The guy then says, uh, no. He then leaves the pizza on the counter and walks back out the door. I shared a brief moment of did that really happen with the other customer and the employee for about 30 seconds until my pizza was ready. I guess the guy thought he was entitled to a free pizza of his choosing to compensate him for the inconvenience of a missed delivery being sent to his house. All I can say is some people, right? Sir, we're giving you that pizza for free, not a pizza for free. Guys, I'm not even surprised that happens. I worked at a sandwich shop before and literally people would take their sandwich home, eat it all, and then call back to demand a free one because it was a little burnt. Well then why would you eat it all, silly? How are we supposed to know that it was burnt now? So a little backstory. I worked at this hotel for over two years and was one of the two people that went through the training when our hotel changed franchises. During this training, we were told about certain rules that the company had. So here's the story. One afternoon, I was scheduled to work a second shift from 3 to 11. I walked in and both of my front desk co-workers looked like they'd been massively crying as their makeup was smeared. My manager was looking quite pissed and I asked, hey, uh, what's wrong? The manager then says, we have a major jerk as a guest. This guy's on the highest level on the rewards for the hotel chain. He's very demanding and he wants free upgrades, free this, free that, and screams anytime he has an interaction with the staff. This guy has made every department call me complaining about him. Now the guy just came to the desk and he screamed at these two coworkers until they were both crying. The two young ladies were fresh high school graduates and they were very sweet and innocent people. They loved helping people and they didn't deserve this treatment. As he was explaining this, I look up the guy's room details. Once my manager finishes explaining everything the guy's done, I see this guy's info and I had a smile from ear to ear. You see, I'm generally a nice guy, unless you're a bully or a super entitled person, and this guy happened to be both. I reply, hey, didn't you see he's an employee of a different hotel? The manager says, yes, but so what? I then replied, well, first off, when you travel as an employee, you're required to behave and be respectful. It's in the fine print on the discount form. I then grabbed his form and showed it to the manager. And I tell him, failure to be respectful can lead to having your employee discount suspended or permanently revoked, and even get you terminated. You need to call this guy's hotel and ask for the GM, and then explain to him who you are and what this guy's doing. I then look up the hotel phone number and call the hotel, and then hand my manager the phone. My manager, after his call with the GM, has an evil and satisfying smile on his face, and he says, his GM is steaming mad after I described all the stuff the guy's done. And that's when the main switchboard phone rings. I answered and said, hello, thank you for calling hotel so-and-so. How may I direct your call? To which the caller says, I want to speak to entitled jerk's room, please. I then replied, absolutely, sir. Have a nice day. I then transfer the call, look at my manager and said, with a sarcastic tone, someone wanted to talk to the entitled jerk. Gee, I wonder who that could be. My manager continues after he stopped laughing and said, the GM gave me his personal cell phone number and said if I have any more issues to call him immediately. I'm leaving the phone number next to the switchboard. If you need it, call him. I then tell the manager, your revenge is done. Now it's time for my revenge. My manager looked at me wide-eyed and said, oh crap, what are you gonna do? I then smiled a very evil smile and said, you'll see. I then pick up the phone to make a call. I say, hello, Hotel Rewards customer service. Yes, I would like to report someone using his reward accounts while using his employee discount on his stay. Customer service says, he can't do that. I replied, I know, I'm calling to report him. I then gave her the guest reservation number and the rewards member number. I continue on and said, I bet anything if you dig through the guy's history, you'll find all of his stays are probably at employee discount. Customer service tells me I'm starting a ticket to have this guy's account investigated. To which I reply, thank you, and then hang up the phone. The manager watched as I removed his rewards number from his stay. At this point, my manager had a huge grin on his face and said, that was awesome. I then explained, oh, I'm not quite finished with him yet. It's time to go spread the news to all departments that he's no longer a rewards member. I then made a new key for his room without concierge access. I walked around to every department. As I explained why I was stopping by, everyone had the same reaction as I soon mentioned the guy's name. The reaction was, oh god, now what about this a-hole? 
I've finished explaining why he was no longer a reward member, and if he gives anyone issues, to call the front desk immediately, and his GM already probably tore him a new one just a minute ago. Everyone was so happy at this news. I finally went down to the concierge room and used the guest's new key to void his current key. Then I walked in the room and explained the information to the evening concierge. She cringed at the mention of his name. And after explaining that she wouldn't have to deal with him again and asked her to leave the morning person a note about the guy not allowed in the concierge room anymore, she was very happy. While I was gone, the manager explained what we did to the two front desk ladies. The minute I got back to the desk, both my coworkers came up to me and gave me a huge hug and thanked me so many times. The manager said to me after the coworkers went home, hey, do me a huge favor please. If I ever piss you off, please come and tell me so I can fix the issue. Later that night, the entitled jerk comes to the desk, hat in hand, politely saying his keys no longer work. I replied, oh, I'm so sorry about that, let me make you a new key, in the best fake smile that I could muster. So here's the aftermath. The next day, I check his rewards account, and it's now been suspended. I check back next week, and it said, sorry, account number not found. Guys, you know what, I'm so shocked that someone who works in another hotel could treat staff like that. Like, you'd think with all the crap from Karens that the guy probably gets on a regular basis that he'd be a much nicer person when dealing with other staff. But who knows, maybe he's the type of guy that thinks, well, if I have to take abuse on the regular, I should just dish it out when I can. For backstory, I work at a lender. Not a bank, but a company that does personal loans for people with so-so credit. Today, I was staying late to close a loan. Because of the nature of my industry, we sometimes do loans that are secured, meaning we use your car as collateral. A part of that process is taking pictures of your car. The loan I stayed for late was one of those. So I go out and get pictures of the car. And while I'm in the parking lot, I notice that someone's pulled up behind me, close enough that their front bumper was smushed up against the rear of my car, to the point that my bumper was flexed inwards. At a glance, it doesn't look like there's any damage, but this person definitely rear-ended me. My customer is standing right there, so I don't say anything. I just make a mental note to check my car when I'm done. I finish my loan closing, close the branch, and go outside. The car is still there, still pressed up against my rear bumper. So I grab my phone and snap pictures of the license plate, just in case. As I'm walking to take a picture of where the car is touching mine, all of a sudden I hear, Excuse me, excuse me, what the heck are you doing? I then turn around, and there's a woman storming up to me, and we'll call her crazy bitch because, you know, she was in fact that. I say to her, oh, this person hit my bumper, I'm just getting a record. The woman scoffs and storms past me to look, and she scoffs again and says, ugh, I'm gonna go get my keys, you don't go anywhere. The woman then storms back towards the restaurant beside my branch, so I stand around outside and wait for her. Stupid, but I was pretty shocked. About a minute later, she's coming back over with a man who I'm assuming is her husband trailing beside her. The woman says to her husband, I caught her taking pictures of our license plate because we're too close. She thinks it's okay to do that. She then looks at him and says, do something about this. She then turns to me and says, you need to pull your car up to see if there's damage. Do it. Now. I tell her, well, there is definitely contact there. You hit my car. The woman screams at me and says, then pull up a little and see if there's damage. Pull up. I tell her I'm going to, but... She then interrupts me and says, Then do it. You took a picture of my license plate. How dare you? Give me your phone right now so I can delete those photos. Pull up and see. Pull up and see there's no damage. At this point, I'm fighting with my temper. Now, I'd like to think that I'm a fairly reasonable person, but they rear-ended me, and this psycho's acting like I'm the problem here. So I open my mouth to say something awful, but her husband's being chill and perfectly reasonable. And I know better than to start arguing with crazy. So I rein it in and speak as politely as I know how and say, Ma'am, I'm gonna pull up and check, but I would appreciate it if you would be a little bit more polite because I don't feel like I'm in the wrong here. To which the woman says, You need to pull up and check. See if there's damage. Pull up. Do it. So I give in. It's about an hour and a half after I was supposed to finish work, and I'm not gonna wrestle with this pig. So I pull up, and there's no damage I can see. The husband then says, hey, are we, are we good? I tell him, yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything. He tells me, okay, good, thanks. It was at that point his wife says, wait, she still has pictures. She then turns to her husband and says, take the phone from her, make her delete the pictures. She then turns to me and says, You took a picture of our license plate. You need to delete that. 
The woman demands that I pull out my phone, and then she comes over and watches over my shoulder as I delete the pictures. I tell her, look, move to trash, there, it's gone. She tells me, you took more than one, keep scrolling through your pictures so I can see. I tell her, no, I didn't, look, you can see the last picture I took under the label yesterday, that was it. She then walks away satisfied, and the husband thanks me again and says, I'm glad we're good. He then shakes my hand, and I tell him, me too, man, thanks. I then get into my car and go home, where I go into the deleted images on my phone and restore the photo of her license plate, because F that crazy woman. I'm honestly thinking about posting it out of pure spite. Ugh, guys, I got so tired just reading about the woman ordering OP and her husband around like that. Like, relax. And hey, at least OP gets to go home and never hear that woman again. Her poor husband, on the other hand, probably deals with that stuff all the time. So, there's two bosses in this story. The owner of the business and the lady he hired to handle the business and to make it successful. He was a man with an idea, but with no business knowledge at all. He'll be called Sal and she'll be called Lexi. Now, she was a Karen, but that's overused. And that's not their actual names, of course. I dealt mostly with Lexi, as Sal mostly worked the farm side of things. This was my first job out of high school. It was a small local ice cream shop, using milk and cream from Sal's dairy. There were approximately 5 employees at the ice cream shop itself, working minimum wage. It was fine for the first few weeks. I was scooping ice cream in a really slow store, and I was allowed as many samples as I wanted throughout the day. And then one day, I went to buy my lunch, and my card was declined. I was a bit panicked because I had just deposited my paycheck in person a few days prior. This was before the day of smartphones, so I called my mom and had her go on the bank website to see what happened. And my paycheck had bounced. There wasn't enough money in my employer's accounts, and he had written me a bad check. And if that wasn't bad enough, the bank fines you for trying to cash a bad check, so I was fined enough to overdraw my account. And then I got an overdraft fee too. Now of course I was super upset, so I went back in the store and told Lexi what happened, that I had no money for food. Hearing that, she got really annoyed with me, like she was upset I didn't have any money. But she lent me $10 to buy lunch, but not before telling me, Hey, this had better not become a regular thing, okay? Now, I didn't have the balls to tell her off for writing me a bad check and then blaming me for not having money to eat. I also didn't know that you could report that kind of thing to the Better Business Bureau. My mom transferred some money into my account, and I was able to pay Lexi her $10 the next day. This happened three separate times. That's right. They wrote me three bad paychecks, and I got fined for each of them. The third time Lexi handed me my envelope, I told her, I'm gonna go to the bank. If this paycheck doesn't go through, don't expect me at work tomorrow. I'm not a volunteer. I'm not a slave. So guess what? She fired me. She said something about my attitude, that I wasn't being a team player. I told her they'd already bounced more than one check on me, and with all the bank fees, it was actually costing me money to work for them. I couldn't afford to come to work if they kept bouncing my checks. She then told me that I should have told her, and that she can't help me if I don't tell her. And here's the thing, I did tell her. Also, I shouldn't have to. If you're running the business accounts, it's on you to know how much is in them. So guess what? The check bounced. Later that night, she texted me to bring in the key to the store and give it to the new opener. I didn't think to hold it hostage in exchange for my money, so I dropped it off the next morning. Sal and Lexi weren't there, so I warned the new guy right there in front of the customers that they had written me a bad check multiple times, and to watch out, and demand payment in cash if possible. I then communicated with Lexi via text, and told her how much money they owed me. I didn't think to add the fees, I just asked for the total amounts on the paychecks, just my hourly wage. She told me she'd mail me a check. Three weeks went by and I received nothing from them. And that's when I texted her again. No response for several days and I texted her again and again. I finally got a hold of her and she told me she'd mail it the next day. I waited. Nothing came. Not from her at least. So what did come was a few notices from my bank saying that those checks had bounced. At the bottom of those notices was a duplicate of the check which were official and could be used as checks. Allowing me to attempt cashing them again. Because we used different banks, I couldn't check with my bank to see if there was enough money in his account before cashing the check. And I wasn't paying any more fees for these idiots. So what did I do? I opened a bank account with his bank. So when you're using the same bank, you can ask them to check to make sure there's enough money in the account before you cash a check. They can't tell you how much is in there, just if there's enough to cash the check. As soon as there was enough money in the account, I bled him dry. I have no remorse about it all. It was my money, after all. So I emptied his account of the few thousand dollars he owed me. Three paychecks, folks. Not a small amount of money. 
I then took my money out of that bank and I texted Lexi saying, don't bother sending the check. I got my money. Lexi texted me back right away this time demanding to know how I got the money. I explained that the bank had sent me the notices and that the checks attached were legal tender. So I was able to cash those. And reading that text, she was livid. She texts back, I can't believe you would do something like this. Going behind our backs to do this to us. Now I had to raise an eyebrow at that text. My phone then dinged again a few times and she was texting me over and over yelling at me saying, I thought you were better than that. I thought you were an honest person. I am so disappointed in you. I was just laying in bed laughing at the text which just kept coming, blaming me for overdrawing the business bank account. I tell her over text that she was taking advantage of me and I was essentially working for free for more than a month. I actually wasn't doing anything wrong or dishonest, I was getting what was rightfully mine. Yeah, it had set me back a few hundred bucks in bank fees, but as far as I was concerned, this was over and done with, and I was washing my hands of these folks. I didn't text her back, I just deleted the number, looked at the beautiful balance in my bank accounts, and then went to bed, and no check ever arrived in the mail. I don't think she ever sent it, or even intended to send it. All the employees were super young, it was their first time away from home. It turns out they were taking advantage of that. They didn't have us do any kind of legal paperwork or anything. And there's no legal record of me ever working there. They were trying to sneak around the government and abuse their employees to save a buck. Well, what goes around comes around. All I can say is, wow guys, that business was hanging on by a freaking thread. If they never had more than a couple thousand dollars in the account. So yeah, if you guys don't know, knowingly writing a bad check is an act of fraud and is punishable by law. And OP did mention that there were five total employees. And I'm wondering if they all got bad checks as well. I think at that point I would have gone straight to the Department of Labor or the IRS. I have no idea, but I'd be making so many phone calls and trying to shut that place down. Like one bounce check, I can kind of understand but like three times, three times they wrote OP a check that bounced. And the fact that they were never going to pay OP and ran their business by taking advantage of teenagers, I almost wish this became a nuclear revenge where the business gets shut down and their houses are taken. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash malicious compliance where OP's boss constantly harasses him, and OP gets back at him by embarrassing the crap out of him. Guys, go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.